are these people? Georgia is choking, yes. Have you heard about this? Do you hear about this? So a little bit, but there's more information that you reported that even shocked me. So Georgia is choking. So about 10 days ago or so, a chemical plant had an explosion. And as it turns out, now Ryan Christian, Last American Vagabond, done a, done a ton of research about this. I was actually live with him on AM Wake Up on Tuesday morning, and we mentioned it. We talked about it a little bit. They've been doing a lot of coverage on this and talking about what's in that plume, in that big billow of smoke there, and all the different colors and how there's dioxins, which is very hazardous to your health. Well, Let's get into exactly what we're talking about here. So again, here is the last American vagabond.com. He's also an indie media award honoree. Ryan Christian, good dude, uh, really does his research, has a ton of links and uh, he, he follows the science, like the real science, not the pseudoscience. And he goes into the actual studies and the investigations and his, his list of resource of sources for each show, and he does a show that can go as five hours sometimes daily, is really impressive. And uh, and he goes deep. So he was talking about how this is similar to East Palestine. Yeah. And he, and he spoke to a, um, a an expert in, in dioxins and in chemicals in the water and in the air. So one of the things I noticed and I pulled today it was from... I think it was Business Insider. Businesses frustrated as chemical plume from Biolab fire keeps them closed in Conyers. Now, this has been going on about 10 days, and you see how thick that haze and that fog is, that plume. Yeah. It's dangerous to breathe this stuff. All right. And they really have not been talking about it publicly. But I found this tweet thread earlier today, and it results in an oh my goodness at the end, but. She said that she was attending the Zoom meeting of the Rockdale legislative delegations about the Biolab chemical plume. All right. That first off, she's attending via Zoom because this meeting was held in a legislative building an hour away from the city at 10 a.m. on a workday. Well, they moved it that far out of the city for all the local officials because I think they were worried for the health risks, but they didn't want to tell the, the locals about that. But then they held it via Zoom for anyone that wanted to attend. It was posted weird. They didn't really want locals to attend and to ask questions about this. All right. She says, Zoom audio went out. The live stream was on YouTube here. State legislators held a public meeting over the Biolab chemical plume. Hmm. Interesting. A representative of a group that is newly formed, which is called Concerned Citizens of Conyers, asks, why wasn't there a state of emergency declared, delivered to the governor's office, so a state of emergency could be declared? Biolab has numerous violations. They want the Biolab shut down and an overhaul of their leadership and over a billion dollar settlement, including cleanup and recovery efforts, is what they're asking for. All right, and then... Um, she says, the legislators seem very defensive. Every speaker is met with a slight interrogation of their words. How do you want us involved? How are we supposed to know? How long has this organization convened? Are you a nonprofit? Are you listed with the Secretary of State? They're looking to discredit the locals so that they can turn around and give them $750 like they did the residents of Western North Carolina. This is where it starts to really get sad and really get scary. Soil and Water Conservation Representative is speaking now. He's the first black man elected to this position. I didn't even know there was such a thing. A Soil and Water Conservation Representative. We're going to find out about him in a minute. He states that every Rockdale resident needs to go to the doctor to get checkups because the chemicals handled at Biolab will kill you. Mm. Asking for MSDS and layout of the Biolab building, okay? He calls for a federal investigation into Biolab in Rockdale County. He says that he's been warning people for at least six years that the company was going to explode. We need a federal criminal investigation here. 
representative from businesses and are asking already from SBA loans, some small business administration loans, to help employees and business owners near ground zero of the Biolab fire because their businesses have now been closed for 10 straight days. I'm living the American dream and it's being ripped from me because my businesses are closed. Holy moly. Another business owner who's located directly across from Biolab says, I have not heard one single word from the county as to what is going on or how long we will be impacted. But a Biolab employee with a hazmat suit came in to kick him out of his business. Nice. We are being purposefully misled. Another resident says, quote, we are we have just now been told that it is not safe because they know they could face some liability as well. You bet they they can. but." You know, how's that going to work if everybody ends up literally, like, dead from it? And that's what we're going to look at in a minute. The Rockdale government is compromised. The state should take over to investigate this. All right. She didn't catch a name for this commenter. Talking about reproductive health and carcinogenic efforts. Will long-term efforts be monitored? Excellent questions. I'm sure that they won't be. Okay, because like East Palestine, they don't give a crap about the people. Right. And an update posted. Now, this was at, again, her last tweet was at, it was on October 8th at about 1 o'clock, 1.30 during this thread, 10.43 in the morning. Her last post was about 1 o'clock. Y'all, this man, Kenny Johnson, collapsed and died outside the Capitol building right after giving his testimony at this meeting. Jesus. Walked outside, fell to the ground, collapsed, pronounced dead. So we also have here Miss Leading, all right, who has actually, she put out a tweet with Kenny's final words, and we're going to play a couple of minutes of what his final words had to say, that everyone needs to go to the doctor and have their blood checked, that he contacted all of his public officials, Senators Warnock, Ossoff, and... Congressman Hank Johnson, of course, they didn't do shit. What are they going to do? And there must be a federal criminal investigation. So I'm going to open this up right here. And hopefully it doesn't open my DMs. Good. All right. We're going to start here. Here's his last speech. Hello, and welcome. The state representative for solid water conservation. I'm the first black man to be elected to this position. Since 1937, since the creation of solid water. I uh, worked in a field like this before, and uh, <clears throat> you catch my breath. But this company is called a CLD. What I mean is, it's a chemical oxygen demand. They treat their own water. And the chemicals that they keep on property, sulfuric acid, MIBK, that will kill you. <laughs> Everybody in Rockville County need to uh, go to the doctor and uh, check out the blood for toxins. Please get that out. They used to send me out every time, at least every other month. So, please. Next thing is, I asked for a federal criminal investigation. This is not the first time. This is the second time. I've been asking for this three weeks ago to Senator Alsa, Senator Warnoff, and Congressman Hank Johnson. Both of the off all the officers said they were going to do an inquiry and have the DOJ get involved. I had the HOA on the on the phone calls with me. Three weeks later, okay. Three weeks later, what we have? Fire. But they say it's an accident. Where's the MSDS? Yes. Where's the material safety data sheet? Where's the layout of the company? Why, why the chemicals were stored in the dry place? Why they didn't call out phone truck like they did in 2004? And he walked out the courtroom. He walked out that room, out the state capitol. And, and collapsed and died. It's, I, yep. 
He just finished calling for a federal criminal investigation into KIK and Biolab, and he was proud to be the first black supervisor elected in his community. For context, East Palestine saw approximately 2 million pounds of chlorine burn. Conyers has seen 10 to 20 million pounds of chlorine burn per Fox 5 Atlanta. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So going back to our slideshow here. All right. As T Lav says, this is the Georgia fire that they just discussed. Hopefully, Scott C. Smith, the water expert and the air expert, will be doing dioxin testing, which almost no one is covering this story. And the problem is, is that people are not necessarily testing for dioxins. They're trying to test for other chemicals, cover up for the fact that the dioxins, which are the toxic, deadly chemicals, are still there. You know, may he rest in power. Thank you, Kenny, for trying to warn us. Um, prayers for his family. I hope, I hope they, they take care of, of them and of him. It's, it's heartbreaking to see this happen, and, and I don't want to see stuff like this happen. But don't worry, folks. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations is all over it. <sighs> Famously from declaring originally that Tortuguita was not necessarily killed by, <laughs> by police bullets, even though he was shot 52 times unarmed with its hands in the air. Uh, the same famous Georgia Bureau of Investigations is now investigating and doing an autopsy on Mr. Johnson. Keith McHenry sharing that. Shout out to Food Not Bombs, Keith McHenry. Give him a follow. All right. This is a story you will not hear about on corporate media or anywhere else, and that is the reason why we get demonetized, why we get censored, why we get the platform from TikTok, by the way. We are no longer on TikTok. Thanks so much, TikTok. We put 25 videos out there in two plus years, but I guess they saw fit that they didn't like something that, that we put up and pulled down our channel forever. Um, so we don't have a TikTok anymore, but you can find us on codashv.com slash Indie News Network. We've got our cash app, dollar sign Indie News Network. You've got all of the stuff in the scrolling ticker down at the bottom. You can find all the links at IndieNews.network. Uh, please, again, don't forget to give that, give that button a like and a subscribe and please share it. We need, we need the help, man. We, we, you know, we're trying to get like 50, 60 views per clip. We'd like to get over 200 views per, per live stream. That's kind of our next goal where we're trying to help get to. And it's, we're relying on, on all of you because we are user funded and we don't pay for advertising and we don't pay for ad. We don't let advertisers pay for us. So it's up to you. Thank you. And help us, help us get to 3k. I love you and thank you.